Hey, how's it going you guys? So in preparation for this project, I did my own research like I usually do, but to be honest, I didn't come up with much. After puzzle piecing my way through this, I came up with, you have pretty much two options of polyurethane sliders to use. And that's HDPE, like most of us know, or UHMW. UHMW is a little bit better at self-lubricating and it's better for wear and durability. So that's actually the way I went and I'd suggest you do the same. The price difference isn't that much, so I think it is the better option. So the first thing you're going to have to do is figure out what width you want. And that's going to determine based on your sled. For instance, on this one, it has no guides or anything along those lines. So I went with the wider body uh, polyurethane, one half inch thick as well. And that's because this is a very flimsy sled, as you'll see. So that's the better option for there. Now on this sled, for instance, you have pre-made cutouts for the runners to fit in. You're going to want to make sure that whatever you order fits well in here. In this case, these are one and an eighth. I have one inch stock just because that's what's readily available. And it seems like it was most economical to order in the 60 inch lengths. So that's what I did. Your next step is just going to be to lay this down and get your measurements so then you can start cutting. So what you're going to want to do here is measure from the tip here all the way to the end. And that's going to give you your measurement for the overall length. Looks like we're at 37 and 5 eighths. You don't necessarily want to go beyond this because then you could cause any strain if you're dragging it backwards or anything like that. If you notice, I had the tape measure upside down and that's just trying to get me a more flat surface here without the bulge of the tape measure. So what I'm gonna do is cut all four of these to 37 and 5 eighths and then I'll get back with you. All right, now that we got all these squared up, so from this end and the other end, I'm gonna do a half inch, and that'll be my first set of holes. And then we'll space all of them out in between. So with spacing, I think you wanna stay around the nine to 10 inch mark. More is better, so if you need to, err on the side of caution. But here, I'll show you guys a little trick on how to do this. So for instance, right here, I have just over 36 inches. So I know I'm going to need at least four in here based on that. So what you can do is think about it like this. You can make a mark one, two, three, four. Now to do the math on this, you have one, two, three, four, five parts here. One thing to have handy for this is a conversion chart, which you can just Google and it'll show you this. But that way you can convert your fractions into decimals and then back. So with my measurement here between my two marks being 36 and 5 eighths, that comes up to 7.325, which is almost 7 and 5 sixteenths. So what I'm going to do is mark from the, each side and, and the variance will be in the middle. And I'm completely okay with that because it doesn't need to be perfect. Now, if you were to do this and want it perfect, obviously you'd want to accompany that number. So now you're, all you're going to want to do is find the center of each one so you know where to drill. In this case, these are only one inch wide, so we'll be looking for a one half inch. So being that I'm using number 10 machine screws, I'm going to be using a 3 16 drill bit to drill all the way through each and every one of these. All right, so the next step is gonna to be to countersink these. And that's so that that machine screw sits below the top of the surface. 
uh, quite a bit actually, almost halfway through. For this I'm going to be using a 21 64th bit. And this is going to depend on what size screw you end up using. So don't take this as gospel. But whatever size uh, drill bit that you need in order to comfortably fit the head of whatever screw that you're using, that's the size you're going to want this to be. Now another option to the drill, drill press here is I have a lock for the depth. So that's going to allow me to consistently get the same depth in each one is what's called a drill bit stop. Now you can just make one of these by wrapping electrical tape around your drill bit or you can purchase them with that clamp onto the drill bit in order to keep a consistent depth so you don't drill too far because you still want enough there to hold it together otherwise your screw could potentially just pull through and render the runner useless. So with the drill press here, what I'm going to do is get my table low enough so it can fit underneath here and then lock it down. And then I have an adjustment on the side here where I can set a stop to how far this allows the collar to get, go down and then it hits a, hits a break. So what I'm going to do is line it up kind of like so get it to about a, the halfway mark and then I'm going to lock it down so then that prevents me from over drilling the hole. So as you can see now I hit a break and it won't allow me to over drill. So I'm going to make sure that's nice and secure and then I'm going to run back through all these and re-drill them. If you've been looking for an excuse to buy a drill press, this is it. Even a cheap one like this works great for any projects. One thing to keep in mind though as you're doing this is make sure you're holding it really tight or using a clamp system because if this does start to lift up as it will as it catches on the drill bit, it'll over drill your hole. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now that we've got all of our holes drilled, the next step is going to be to get this curvature right. Now, don't get me wrong, what you can do is just simply drill this out, bolt it, and then bend it over. But I think that causes a little bit more stress on this plastic than you need to. So what I like to do is heat this up on the outside here. As the inside, it doesn't need to bend as much. So I'd focus the heat from the heat gun on the outside and then get this bend just right and then we'll bolt it in here. So now that we got this one all warmed up, what I'll do is I'll actually put the next one I'm going to do in front of the fire here and have it all ready to go for when I'm ready for it. Then we'll go back over by the sled and get this one all mounted up. So with that curve all you're going to do is lay it into the place it needs to go and then drill out your hole. I do kind of prefer to start at the end here where you're going to have a stop. That way it keeps it nice and tight and then you can fold it over the rest of the way. And then just using those 1024s, I'm using three quarter inch long, but I mean that's going to be determined by how thick your plastic is and what you choose to use. And I'm using some fender washers just to give it a nice surface to bite across, as well as lock nuts. And this is all stainless steel.
Then you'll just continue on all the way down the run. All right, you guys. Well, that about wraps this video up. Both sleds are ready to go now. If this video helped you out at all, please give me a thumbs up. Comment if you guys got any questions for me. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.